hello traders welcome to my channel uh, today I wanted to make a special video talking about the futures market this is something that a lot of people ask me about also a lot of my students uh, especially in my day trading course which is mostly focused on futures trading ask me a lot about you know how do I get started in futures etc I talk about this in the course but I wanted to just make a general video for all my YouTube audience talking about futures trading um, how do you get into it what does it consist of what can you trade etc we're gonna go over all these topics in the video we're gonna define it talk about the markets what you need to start trading uh, the margins data and costs and then I'm gonna finish with some tips and recommendations as far as risk management so make sure to watch all the way to the end this video is mostly gonna be focused on theory I'm gonna show you just some things a few uh, charts just to illustrate certain points but it's mostly gonna be theory with a lot of information and even though there's futures markets in countries all over the world uh, we're gonna focus on the CME group the Chicago Mercantile Exchange which is the main futures um, market in the world by volume and it's based uh, in Chicago like the name says it's a conglomerate of four different uh, exchanges and this is the most popular futures markets in the world so let's start off by just defining what is a future so a future contract is a legal agreement to buy or sell a particular commodity or asset or security at a predetermined price at a specified time in the future they are standardized for quality and quantity to facilitate trading on a futures exchange the buyer of each futures contract is taking on the obligation to buy and receive the underlying asset when the future contract expires and the seller of the futures contract is taking on the obligation to provide and deliver the underlying asset at the expiration date some futures um, are considered a uh, physical assets such as like commodities for example um, oil metals etc some of them are purely um, digital assets for example um, the equity indexes uh, most traders though are not going to hold contracts open until expirations they're simply going to speculate on them at the current front month contract so this is going to be the contract with the most volume um, traded and we're going to talk about contracts and expirations very soon but basically most people are just gonna trade futures just to try to make money in the short term short medium term they're just gonna try to open a position go long or short if they expect the market to go up or down close it and make a quick profit so a lot the majority of people are not going to just hold a futures contract until the expiration date um, so the CME group again like I said is the world's leading and most diverse derivatives marketplace made up of four exchanges Chicago Mercantile Exchange Chicago Board of Trade New York Mercantile Exchange and the Commodities Exchange each of this offers a wide range of global benchmarks across all major asset classes so you can see we have commodity futures such as crude oil gas corn etc stock indexes which are probably the most popular the most traded by um, um, which are such as like the S&P 500 or the Nasdaq 100 we have currency futures like euro and British pounds so again for all the Forex traders you can trade currencies in the futures market although the volumes on this you know are definitely not nearly as good or high as just the spot few uh, forex markets we also have precious metals like gold and silver we have treasury futures such as bonds and then the newest category which is the cryptocurrency futures which we got Bitcoin and ethereum futures as well and you can see right here the 
market hours. Um, some have a little special hours, sort of like grains, for example. But for the most part, you know, the markets that most people are going to be traded are going to be the currencies and the stock indices or the uh, metals and energies. And all this ones pretty much trade from Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern till Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern. But every day there is a pause between 5 and 6 p.m. Eastern time where trading is halted. But pretty much futures offer us five days of trading during 23 hours a day. So you have a lot of um, time available. We're going to go over the difference though. There's regular and extended market hours and the volumes are going to be very different in those as we're going to talk. So now let's go over how do we read a futures symbol. So for example, we have this is the current contract for the E-mini S&P 500, which would be the ES contract. And this is the name for the current contract as the time of this video. So basically the ES part, this is the symbol for the S&P index. The U in the name, it's based off of this guideline here for the calendar, which each month of the year has assigned a letter. So since this contract expires in the month of September, then it has the letter U. And then finally, just the year of expiration. So that's pretty much how every name for futures contract is made up. Equity indexes expire every three months. So in this case, this one's we are always going to have March, June, September's, and December's when we're talking about the micro or mini uh, ES, the NASDAQ, etc. Then, for example, we have here the Euro dollar futures, and it would be G, G E, G E would be the symbol for the Sorry, this is an E right here. GE would be the symbol for the Euro dollar futures. Q would be the month of August, which we're in, and the year of expiration. So in this case, cryptocurrency and currency futures expire monthly. So you can see here the same thing. Bitcoin would be BTC is the name for Bitcoin. Q would be the expiration in August. August at the end of the month and then 2022 is the year of the contract okay and if we just go here into for example trading view and we go into the top left right here you can see how if you go to symbol search you can just go to futures and you can see we have a lot of contracts from exchanges all over the world. You have uh, India, there's Europe, etc. Under sources, if you just go and you highlight USA, over here you can see pretty much you have the whole CME group with the most popular instruments. So if we open, for example, the NASDAQ, the NQ, you can see we have a whole list here. The first two are continuous contracts, which basically this just every time one contract expires uh, every trimester, then it will just tag on the next one. So let's see if I put NQ, the continuous current contract in front, and I go into like a daily chart, you can see we have pretty much here several months of action and this is the nasdaq 100 futures and the current contract for september is going to be what we have reflected right now as the price at this moment if i go for example here into nq but I select, for example, let's say the December contract, which is the contract that is coming up ahead. 
you can see that this chart sort of looks strange. This is because this December contract is the contract ahead of the September. So back here, there was pretty much very little interest in it. There was almost no volumes traded. And it wasn't until about April that we started getting some volumes, but it's still not reflected as it would be on the current month contract. If I go into the September contract, you can see that now this chart looks more complete because this contract was opened earlier so we started getting a little more volumes early on etc again if you're a day trader obviously it's not going to make a very big difference how much um information or data you have going back if you want to do a long-term analysis on this market then this is where the continuous contract is useful because if I go to just continued contract now I have my full chart with every single contract put together and then here now I can go back and I can take you know my volume profile and I can do an analysis going back a long time etc okay but pretty much just showing you how you can just go here and under futures select you know your exchange and you can see here gold bitcoin etc metals ethereum euro fx etc okay so this is just how you know you have access to a lot of different markets when it comes to futures now let's go over what are the advantages of futures markets there's many advantages here's some a few of them uh, traders in the u.s get tax advantages compared to stocks rate of trading as you're able to report part of your profits at a more favorable long-term capital gains bracket therefore giving you a more favorable tax bill at the end of the year um, futures are highly leveraged instruments which provide greater exposure for less margin so profits and losses which this is very important to take into account can be made quicker because you are more exposed than say with traditional stocks for example futures are very liquid again this is depending on the market it varies but if you take something like es nasdaq even now like uh bitcoin is getting a lot better etc by liquidity which just means volume traded how easy we can get in and out of the market i mean especially if we're just a retail trader we're probably not going to be trading a ton of size so if a market is very liquid that means we can just get in at market in and out at very favorable executions we're not going to get any slippage or anything like that many markets also trade beyond traditional market hours so this is what we we're talking about whereas the stock market is only open from 9 30 a.m to 4 p.m the futures markets are going to be open from 6 p.m the day before up until 5 p.m the next day so it's pretty much going to encompass regular market hours plus we're going to have what's called the globex session or extended hours which is goes from 6 p.m until 9 30 a.m the next day and then the stock market would open and then that is when we have the most um amount of traded volume and we can quickly just show you that if i go into a chart for example of the let's just go into the current es let's go to the september contract for es to the hourly chart so here we have an hourly chart let's divide the sessions so you can see every segment here is basically 23 hours of trading let's go into a five minute chart 
And now if I put in the indicator for volume, just regular time based volume down here, you can see pretty much what we're talking about as far as the market hours, pretty much from this point here at 6 p.m. to 9.30 a.m. This is what we would call extended trading hours or the Globex session. And then from 9.30 a.m. until well, 4 p.m. right here. This is regular trading hours. This is basically the hours that the stock market is open. And you can see how small volumes are on the extended hours as compared to regular trading hours. And then this little part here, this dies off. This is basically from 4 to 5 p.m. That last hour, once the stock market closes, you got the settlements going on and just volumes again go down a lot. And then from 5 to 6 p.m., we got a little hour missing here from the charts that there's no trading. And then we start again at 6 p.m. the next day. But obviously, very big difference in volumes between extended hours and regular market hours. So obviously, it's most recommended and it's... Um, well, I mean, you can trade anytime you want, basically 23 hours a day, but you're going to get the highest liquidity if you are trading during regular stock market hours. Um, next advantage, commissions and execution costs are low and they're charged when the position is closed. So every futures contract is going to have a fee to open uh, commissions and fees to open and close and um, we call this a uh, round trip uh, commission which basically a round trip is when you open and then close a trade that's the total cost for it we're going to talk about that in a little bit they're great for diversification and hedging we're not going to get too much into this topic but you know you have access to many different markets and then with the hedging, you know, it's possible, for example, if you're long on a certain stock or market, then you could also hedge and just go short in the futures contract, etc. Pretty much the futures market started off as um, focus on commodities or agricultural products where producers could hedge their, their products by fixing a price that they wanted to get and then they could hedge their products against you know possibly there could be a drought there could be uh, something that would change their production so by holding futures contracts they were able to hedge and protect themselves to guarantee that they were going to get a certain um you know that they were going to make a certain profit etc and you know there's many different strategies regarding hedging that we're not going to go into but they're very good for this purposes as well uh, the markets are more efficient and fair you know with like for example insider trading if you're trading individual stocks especially penny or small stocks there's a lot of things that can go on with regards to people with inside information etc in future since you're talking about pretty much um a lot of them are just hold mar whole markets or indices. It's a lot harder to have any influence when it comes to this. They are regulated markets. This is a big advantage because unlike a lot of, for example, crypto or Forex uh, brokers that are dealing in, you know, all parts of the world that are not very, um, regulated by government or author uh, financial authorities it's very unlikely that um, a broker or exchange in the u.s or the cme is going to go under that your funds are going to disappear 
that they're gonna be shut down, etc. It's very easy to short sell in futures. So for if you know in the US to actively day trade stocks, you're gonna have to have a very large margin or balance in your account to not violate their pattern day trading rules, etc. With futures, it's very easy to go long or short on your positions and it's completely legal. And then finally, the new micro contract sizes that have opened up a few years ago have opened up the whole market for smaller traders that could not afford margins on the mini contracts. And I think this is the main reason the micro contracts that futures are getting the attention that they are getting now and why smaller speculators are able to participate in them. Now, we're talking about the contracts or futures expirations. Again, this is all information from the cmegroup.com and uh, I recommend you definitely go check that website. There's tons and tons of information. But basically, the way contract rollovers work is for example, now we're trading the September contract at the moment, and that is going to expire on September 16th, 2022. So what happens is, at the days to the expiration draws closer, the contract we're trading, you can see that you're going to hear a lot of people talking about the role or about switching to the next contract. So what happens is, as we get closer and closer to this day that the contract is going to expire, in this case, the September contract is going to start going down in volume and the contract coming up, which will be December, starts going up in value. There's going to be a point where they're going to be both the same. And then right after that, once we're getting close to the exact expiration, volumes are going to greatly decrease in September if everyone just closes, gets out and starts moving into December. And then December is going to take over as the higher volume or the current front month. And then everyone is just going to start trading into the December contract. Okay, so that's pretty much how it works. You're going to hear this expression pace of roll or the roll of contracts. That simply means how the next contract coming up is going to start getting higher volumes as the one that's going to expire is going to start losing volumes until they flip. And then everyone is going to just start using the next contract once this one expires. And that just continues like that every month or every three months, depending on what market you are trading. So now the question, what do I need to day trade futures? So nowadays day trading futures or just trading in general, not necessarily day trading, does not require a lot of capital or complicated paperwork. The process is pretty straightforward. Also, like most other markets, you can demo trade or simulate. So in this case, you would just need a trading platform and you might want to pay for live data in most cases if you want to be, you know, demo trading live on CME instruments. And this way you can trade or practice without risking any real money. So what are the basic things you're going to need to trade futures? First, you're going to need a trading platform. Obviously, this is where you're going to see all your charts and all your indicators, etc. There's many of them. Sierra chart, Ninja Trader, Jigsaw, Trading View, etc. You just got to determine if whatever trading platform you are using, charting platform, if they have access to connect to the brokers that you are going to be using. In my case, I use Sierra chart for all my day trading. Next, you're going to need an introductory broker. Now it is possible, especially, you know, for traders that are doing a lot of size, etc. 
they can directly sign up with a clearing firm but in most cases retail traders are going to go through what is called an introductory broker so an introductory broker is a company that is going to set them up with a clearing firm and that is going to give them the credentials to then connect their trading platforms and they're going to handle all their deposits their money etc introductory brokers there's many of them trade of eight edge clear ninja amp stage fives interactive brokers etc what do i recommend and again i'm not getting paid or sponsored in this video in any way but i would definitely say if you are you know just starting out probably trade of eight and edge clear are going to be your best choices i've dealt with both of them i've had accounts with both of them they have great customer service and they offer probably the lowest fees that i am aware of at the moment um, so you definitely cannot go wrong starting out with either one of this at the moment just for full disclosure i'm actually using stage five because i'm using the new um teton order routing function and denali feed and sierra chart and trade of eight did not have it available so i signed up with stage five but edge clear also has this available for sierra chart so you can use them as well but again you know you can do your own research determining which one you like but an introductory broker is the first step in signing up that most traders are going to need then like i said the introductory broker is going to set you up with a clearing firm such as dorman iron beam phillips advantage futures etc the clearing firm is going to be what's going to match and send all your orders directly into the cme then you're going to need market data depending what markets you trade but most cases you're going to be using one of the cme groups for equities forex crypto futures etc um, you don't need to pay for uh, data for all four cme exchanges in my case since i only trade the es or the es the e-mini and the micro mes all i need is the cme data just for equity futures so i just pay for one of the cme um, exchanges and i'll show you some slides with the costs for this in a second then you have the data connection to the platform you will need some kind of connection from your broker to your platform unless you're using like an in-house platform for example trade of eight has their own in-house online platform or a desktop platform so in that case you don't need to pay for an extra connection into a trading platform but most cases you're going to need something for example rhythmic cqg sierras teton denali etc so for example when i was trading um when i had trade of eight if I wanted to trade to Sierra chart, then I had to pay for a CQG connection to basically connect trade of eight through CQG into Sierra. And this was, I believe, $15 a month. Again, it varies. All of you, for example, if you're doing a trader fundings, if you use a top step, Lilo, uh, Bullinox, um earn to trade all those companies you're going to be using rhythmic and you're going to need to have a rhythmic connection into your trading platforms okay and then obviously you're going to need funds into your account if you're going to trade live money to cover the needed margins for the specific instrument that you are going to trade so this is a screenshot from Sierra charts just to give you an example of how you're going to need a 
connection into your platform. So in this case, in Sierra Chart, you will go under Data Trade Settings, and you need to select the service, and you see you have a whole list here. So like when I was trading, for example, when I was using uh, Earn to Trade, then I was connected into Rhythmic Direct. When I was using Trade of Eight, I was connected through CQG Web API. And now that I am trading uh, my own live account uh, with um, either um, Edge Clear, for example, or Stage 5, then I will be using Tiron CME order routing. But again, you know, this is all handled by your inner introdu introductory broker. So they're going to give you all the information that you need with your credentials to log into the services and then also here you can see where we're talking about the clearing firms and here you have you know advantage dormant etc like i said um you know depending what introductory broker you're going to use is going to vary what uh, clearing firm they're going to be using but they set all that up for you now let's talk about data feeds data fees this is going to vary a little depending by company uh, in my case uh, this is a screenshot from sierra charts this is what i use in my case most of you are going to qualify as non-professional if you're a non-professional your trading fees are going to be a lot cheaper but you're going to need to have a real account with a broker in order to qualify in this case in Sierra for this so in my case this is what I use CME with market depth because if you only choose top of the book which is this cheap one you're basically only gonna get a basic candlestick chart or line or bar chart you're not gonna get any market depth tools like for order flow like market profile delta footprint charts etc for all that you're gonna need market depth so this is what most people are going to be most traders are going to be using and again I'm only using CME depending what market you need you might need the um, C bot or you might need the uh, Comex, etc. You know, if you trade currency futures, you're going to need another one or Bitcoin. But for me, since I only trade the SP500, or if you trade like NASDAQ, you just need the basic CME. Okay. Next, this is a screenshot from Tradeovate. In this case, they have sort of a rounded up fee, which in this case, they charge $15 a month. So this is going to be charged on the first of the month. This is important to know because if we're on, let's say, the 25th of this month and you sign up for this, you're going to pay $15. And then next month on the first, you're going to pay $15 again. I don't know why this is like this, but basically it always goes through on the first of the month. So I recommend, you know, if you don't want to waste a little bit of money, you might want to just wait and activate your market uh, data for CME closer to the beginning of the month. And so as you can see, this gives you depth of market level two data. And again, this is just trade of eight. I showed you before, um, Sierra, but it's pretty much between $10.40 and $15 a month for the basic non-professional CME exchange. Now, let's talk about fees and commissions. So overall, there are four basic types of fees incurred during the active trading of a single futures contract. You're going to have exchange and clearing fees, National Futures Association fee, brokerage commissions and data fees so the data fee we just discussed that's pretty much the 
1040 or the $15 you pay the CME or whatever other uh, exchanges you're gonna need that's the monthly data fees and then for every position you have open you're gonna be incurring in here exchange clearing fees NFA fee and then the brokerage commissions this is how all your introductory brokers make their money they basically tag on a little commission into all your trades all these fees are assets on a per contract basis they're quoted to the trader by the broker's firm as per side or round trip if they say per side that means there's one to open and one to close or if you count both together that's what we call a round turn okay uh, da, da, da. okay so yeah normally you just want to see a hole like we see here for example I took this from edge clear right here you can just go to any of their websites to check it out and basically right there you can see the address there or just search on google uh edge clear uh commissions or trade of it commissions or whatever broker commissions and you can see an example here we're talking about the micro es here's your exchange and futures association fee this is the commission that edge clear is going to make and then the transaction this is again if you're using like rhythmic or cqg etc and so this is total per side so again this is not a round trip this is per side so if you want to know how much it costs to open and to open and close a trade of one contract pretty much you multiply this by two and so you're going to see that is going to be 128. So basically, for every futures contract that you open and close a trade in, you're going to get a total round trip commission all in of a dollar and 28. What does that mean? Well, it means, for example, if you make a trade and you win. Uh, you know let's say you win one point which in micros is gonna be five dollars and you close this trade well you're gonna have five dollars and you need to take out one dollar and 28 cents from this as your commissions if you lose five dollars then you're gonna lose five dollars plus an extra 128 so you're going to lose six dollars and 28 cents total so again like we said earlier these commissions and fees are tagged on to your trades as soon as you close them so that's why you always need to keep this in mind and know that the more you open and close trades the more fees and commissions you're going to be incurring this is taken from trade of eight this is their current fees and commissions that i found on their website so again let's say if you're gonna trade the micro es for example you can see right here exchange and nfa order routing this is in zero because this is assuming if you use their own in-house platform then you're not going to get charged an order routing but if you use another platform you're going to get some here clearing fee and then um this here well trade of eight has a special um subscription service to reduce fees but assuming you don't have that it would be here so then this is the commission they're going to charge you um, per contract. And then over here, your all-in rate is going to be right here. And again, this is the all-in rate per side. So it's going to be 0 0.66 cents. So that means that for one MES contract, 
every trade that you open and close on the MES with, in this case, with Trade of Eight, you're going to be paying $1.32 in commissions. Okay. So now let's talk about margins. Margins refers to the amount of money that you need to have in your account in order to hold a contract open or a trade open. Again, let's just continue talking about the micro. Let's talk about the micro ES, for example. So in this case, initial margin, this amount that's the highest one, this refers to the money you have to have if you're going to hold a contract open through what's called overnight. Remember when we talked about the schedules of the futures? So in this case, we were saying how regular trading hours are from 9.30 a.m. to well, it's technically until 5 p.m., but as we said, at 4 p.m., the stock market closes, so pretty much all volumes die off. So I would just say that the markets close at 4 p.m. And then we have the extended trading hours, which are from 6 p.m. until 9.30 a.m., of the following day okay so in this case just bring my pen again if you're going to be holding a trade between 5 p.m and 6 p.m during the one hour closure that the markets is closed per day you're going to need to have 1155 in your account as collateral or margin for every micro you have open so if you want to swing trade and hold trades open for several days or for more than one day you are going to need to cover the initial margin on your account otherwise that can liquidate your positions or ask you to just deposit more collateral okay so that covers initial margin maintenance margin again this is to keep the trade open once you have it open this is uh overnight again what you're gonna need to hold the trade open overnight now most of you if you're trading futures are going to be day trading if you day trade, meaning you're going to have all your trades closed, all your orders and your positions closed by 5 p.m. Eastern or well, 4 p.m., which is what I would recommend, then your margins are going to be a lot less. So if you're going to be trading micros like the micro ES, you can see that you're going to get need just a hundred dollars for every contract of mes that you're gonna have open obviously you know you want to have some wiggle room you don't want to just have a trading account open with like a hundred dollars and open one mes because obviously that's very tight you're probably going to get liquidated or they're going to force to close your position you obviously want to have some room to spare in terms of your margin but as you can see day trading fees are a lot more accessible now especially for micro contracts and you're not going to need a ton of money in your account so this is part of the reason why futures are now very popular among traders okay and then what we talked about contract size on the micros every point is five dollars and every tick is 125 the whole scale is split into um, 0.25 increments so if you just look at a futures e-mini scale you're gonna see that price moves in 
0.25 increments, okay? Now, the question that everyone is always asking, and this is very key, how much funds do I need to trade live? Again, this is has a lot of variables. It's very hard to just tell you because it's based on your personal situation, your trading goals, your trading strategy. But assuming you're only going to day trade, meaning you're not gonna call trades open between four to six Eastern time on CME products, you're gonna need significantly smaller amount of margin in your account to trade. So once you determine what markets you want to trade, then the most conservative approach is gonna be to determine a one to 2% risk per trade. Again, this is a very standard um, number in the industry. A lot of people advocate for a risk of about one to 2% per trade based on your account size. So let's say if you're gonna trade the micro ES, the SP500, then we assume an average day trading margin for one MES is $100. Every tick, as we said, is worth 125. Every point is worth five. Keep in mind, like we said, we need to take into account fees and commissions that are gonna be charged per round trip. So you want to determine what your standard stop loss is going to be per contract and then use that as a guide to determine how much you need to start off trading with. Even if it's just for practice, you definitely you know, should have adequate margin available in your account. So a very basic and um, you know, way of calculating how much money you're gonna need is, let's say you're gonna trade micro ES. So one micro ES, let's say you're gonna be using a standard or around a four point stop loss. Four points would be 16 ticks. So that means that's $20. That means if you open one micro contract, let's say you go long, and you have a stop loss of four points and your stop loss is hit, you're gonna lose $20 plus the commissions and fees, like we said. So probably $20 and tag on to that like $1.20 in commissions, etc. So that'll be like $21.20. But basically, you know, always to consider the commissions and fees. But then, once you determine that, then you can say, okay, if my standard stop loss is gonna be four points, so I'm willing to lose $20 or so per trade, then assuming you're using a 1% risk, you can just, um, multiply it's times a hundred sorry just erase this here so it will be twenty dollars times a hundred to calculate what it's going to be for the whole account assuming a one percent risk that means you're going to need a two thousand dollar account assuming you're willing to risk twenty dollars per trade using a one percent risk then this is a good general guideline for what you're gonna need. So as you can see, you know, is not is not a tiny account, is not as low as what you can get away with, for example, in forex or crypto markets, but with all the advantages and things we're talked about futures, this is sort of like what you're looking at in terms of futures market again some brokers are gonna let you open accounts with as little as like $500. But obviously that means even if you're using micros, you're gonna be taking a 
much bigger risk percentage per trade based on your account size. So you just want to practice good risk management in that sense. And then finally, to conclude, just some risk management recommendations that I have and I advocate to all my students, all my viewers, etc. Rule number one, always, always use a stop loss. You know, it doesn't have to be super tight, but you always want to have that stop loss just to protect you in a worst case scenario. Ideally, you want a stop loss to be at a point or an invalidation level where your trade plan is no longer valid. Then, obviously, you want to have a clear trade plan. You want to have a clear trading signal based on whatever strategies you use, your volume profile, your price action patterns, market structure, etc. Patience. You don't want to chase the market. You want to let it come to a logical level. You want to go with the order flow, with the momentum, with trend, etc. Um, I recommend especially, well, if you're just starting, at least simulate or demo trade to get your senses as far as the platform, to get acclimated with how the commissions and fees apply, etc. And then, you know, you can move on to live funds if you want. I definitely understand that trading demo and trading live money is completely different mentally. And I definitely, you know, I recommend people, especially once they already have practice for a while, just start trading um, live just to get started getting familiar with the psychology and emotions, etc. of trading. And if you're just going to trade micros, you know, you're not going to be exposing a ton of money, a lot, but you're still going to be trading live funds, which is good for your development. And then, you know, later you can see if you want to move on later into minis, if you're already profitable, etc. And then the last thing, and this is something I recommend a lot with futures, you can talk to any of your brokers that you use, you know, Trade of Eight, um, Edge Clear, um, Ninja, Amp, whatever you use, and you can set hard stop protections in your account. What does this mean? Well, it means you can set up things so that your account is automatically going to be locked if you lose a certain amount of money, if you lose a certain percentage of your account, etc. I highly, highly recommend you do this because you know how it is with trading. If you start trading and you start do going bad, even if you're using stop losses and you get stopped constantly one after the other, bad habits start creeping up. You might want to start revenge trading just going in wherever trying to make everything back in one trade and all those can lead to just a downward spiral that can just pretty much blow up your account so one way to protect yourself is just contact your broker and tell them hey i want to set my account so i'm only authorized to trade this specific uh markets I want to set a limit so I can only trade this number of contracts at a time. I want to set a limit so that I can only lose X amount of money or X percentage of my account per day. And if you hit any of those things, then it'll automatically just lock your account for the day and then it'll unlock the next day when you open up again at 6 p.m. for the next trading day, okay? So this is something that I personally use myself in my own trading, and I think it is very useful and a very good uh, risk management tech tool that is available for futures traders that I recommend everyone use, okay? That's pretty much for the video. Thank you all for joining. I know this went on for 
a long time but I want it to be very detailed and just share as much information as I can about futures to help you all along your trading journey if you haven't done so make sure to subscribe hit the thumbs up any questions or comments leave them down below check my website for more info on my trading courses and um, I will see you all in the next video take care